Good morning everyone, this is the Tesla Model Y rear wheel drive and today we're going to do 130 km an hour range test. I'm here at the supercharger in Egging and I'm charging to 100% and the highway is right here and we're going to do this at 130 like I said, it's a bit colder so I need the heat and everything. This car already has the winter tires on, 19 inch winter tires. It's the same as the normal Model Y, just rear wheel drive, there's no motor in the front and we're gonna see how far we can go and later we're gonna do the same thing at 110 and in between we're gonna do a charging test here at the supercharger if there's any difference in charging curve I don't think so but we're still gonna try um, what else we just did a comparison against an all-wheel drive version and we saw that this car has had lower consumption than the all-wheel drive version but these have has the amazing rims that are more aerodynamic and Matthias in his Tesla Model Y all-wheel drive uh, took that off. He, he doesn't like the look. He doesn't care about efficiency. <laughs> he wants a nice look. Uh, <laughs> so, But it had lower consumption and I don't think it was just the, the rims. I think it, it really is the front motor missing. Um, it still says 20 minutes. Um, yeah, let's go. I am on my way driving 132 on the speedometer that's 130 GPS and no hill because I as usual when I start from my own there's a hill <coughs> but from the supercharger there's no hill only drove 14 kilometers seven minutes I reset uh, by since start and of course since charging so we have all the data down here I even have autopilot on what is this symbol here the lowest one the ba battery symbol with is this a cooling of the battery what is that I have no idea or is this that you don't have full region because the battery is full maybe it's that I'm at 96 percent already charged 200 um, yeah, and we gotta have a, a nice drive, hopefully. <laughs> Let's see how autopilot is and everything. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I'm at 75% and I drove 91 kilometers. That would mean 364 kilometers if I'm not right. Average consumption is 201 watt hours per kilometer. Uh, by the way, it's 13 degrees out there, and when I started, it was a bit colder. It will be in the the list in the in the spreadsheet afterwards, of course, and. Uh, my heat is on 21 and a half degrees. I have it on auto, but uh, blow it, so the, the, the fan is on low. Nice drive so far. Autopilot has not killed me yet. <laughs> That's so mean. <coughs> no. no, it's totally fine today. So far, didn't have any problems. I had one ghost braking going by a truck. That's okay.
I'm at 50% and it was 174 kilometers. So 348 kilometers, we went down quite a bit. Consumption is also steadily going up. We are 210 watt hours per kilometer. It didn't get colder and I didn't change anything at the, on the heat or anything. Everything is the same. Maybe there's wind, but it doesn't look like it. I don't feel it driving and I don't see the trees move and I didn't feel wind when we started so no idea but our range went down all that's how it is um, I will drive my usual thing turn around at the latest point I can before there's a construction zone where I can only drive 90 I don't want to do that so I'm gonna turn around before that and I know the kilometers then as well I turned around, navigated back to the supercharger. It's 91 kilometers. I have how many? 194 kilometers of range. It's 100 kilometers more. Um, I, the car says I will arrive with 9%. Consumption is 212, so it went up. So I'm guessing it's gonna go down on the way back. I always have to lean over so I can see all the trip data because the steering wheel is in the way, but it's fine. Drove 219 kilometers so far, used 47 kilowatt hours. All cool. I could turn down the heat maybe even a bit. Um, how is it to drive the Model Y on a long distance trip on the highway? The, the part of the highway right now is not perfect for this car because it's very bumpy and the car is very sporty and bumpy so you move around I see this camera shake like crazy this car is specific I don't think they did the winter tire they balance them very well because above 135 it shakes like crazy and at 130 it already shakes a bit I don't think this is representative but overall it's a bumpy ride because this is more of a sporty car suspension is more sporty than it is comfortable um, steering on a highway is totally fine. Autopilot today is totally okay. So cruise control is the same as always. You don't have a resume button, which is crazy. I don't get it. Why not? Why can't I just go back to the, the speed that it was before I turned it off or something? It's just sad. Um, but it keeps the distance very nice and, and everything. I mean, I don't need it on a highway right now. That's more country road thing for the distance. And the autopilot uh, works okay. What I don't like is the lane change assist. I said it before, it takes so long. I see a car coming, I'm like, okay, I wanna <coughs> go to the left lane. And I blink, I indicate, nothing happens and then slowly goes over and already had to slow down so if I want to do it fast I have to steer over and then the autopilot turns off I have to turn it back on and there is no option in the settings for the autopilot that you can turn auto lane change off or assisted lane change I would like to turn that off I don't need it if it takes that long not happy the rest I'm okay with uh, noise level now we're on a perfect uh, surface here. And now we go. Its noise level is, is actually okay. It's, it's not that bad, it's not so loud. So I don't think it's as loud as the ID3 GTX that I just drove. Accepted. If you need to plan your trip with your EV, then use a better route planner, the route planner for electric cars. You can select your car, there are 
almost every car in the world is available. It knows the consumption that the car will have. You can specify so many things about your car if you have extra luggage in there, if what heat settings you use and all of this stuff. It's amazing. You can choose what chargers you want to prefer and which one you don't want to use at all. And then it plans your route. It's amazing. And if you are a premium member, you can use real-time traffic data and weather information. And you can also use a better route planner with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay in your car. Use the link in the description below to use a better route planner as a premium member for 30 days for free. And you also support this channel. Thank you very much. Arrived with 11%. Drove 310 kilometers, 211 watt hours per kilometer was my average consumption. So when I take the 309 kilometers the Google Maps says I have driven and say that I used 89% because from 100 to 11% I get to 347 kilometers today with these heat settings and the winter tires and uh, what was it 13 degrees and I think lowest was 11. I don't know. I have to look exactly on the, on the footage. Um, yeah, so it's still good for, for a sporty SUV, uh, rear wheel drive, uh, so not all wheel drive, which is still awesome. Charging now, I had a peak of 255 kilowatt for a second. Now, uh, very fast, it went to 220 or so, but still good. Great charging here at the supercharger. Do a charging test now, film it inside because you can film it at the supercharger. And then I'm gonna do the next test. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, Battery Life One, and if you wanna support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below. And here on YouTube, there's also channel membership. And if you wanna know what's happening behind the scenes, I have a third YouTube channel behind the battery. But that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.